Jurisdiction of a court may be classified under the following categories. First, civil and criminal jurisdiction. Civil jurisdiction is that which concerns and deals with disputes of a civil nature. Criminal jurisdiction, on the other hand, relates to crime and punishes offenders. Second, territorial or local jurisdiction. Every court has its own local or territorial limits, beyond which it cannot exercise its jurisdiction. These limits are fixed by the government. The district judge has to exercise jurisdiction within his district and not outside it. The high court has jurisdiction over the territory of a state within which it is situated and not beyond it. Again, a court has no jurisdiction to try a suit for immovable property situated beyond its local limits. Third, pecuniary jurisdiction. The provisions regarding pecuniary jurisdiction is mentioned under Section 6 of the Code of Civil Procedure 1908. The code provides that a court will have jurisdiction only over those suits, the amount or value of the subject matter of which does not exceed the pecuniary limits of its jurisdiction. Some courts have unlimited pecuniary jurisdiction, example, high courts and district courts have no pecuniary limitations, but there are other courts having jurisdiction to try suits up to a particular amount. Thus, a presidency small causes court cannot entertain a suit in which the amount claimed exceeds Rs. 1000. Fourth, jurisdiction as to subject matter. Different courts have been empowered to decide different types of suits. Certain courts are precluded from entertaining certain suits. Thus, a presidency small causes court has no jurisdiction to try suits for a specific performance of a contract partition of immovable property, foreclosure or redemption of a mortgage, etc. Similarly, in respect of testamentary matters, divorce cases, probate proceedings, insolvency proceedings, etc., only the district judge or a civil judge, senior division, has a jurisdiction. Fifth, Original and Appellate Jurisdiction Original jurisdiction is jurisdiction inherent in or conferred upon a court of first instance. In the exercise of that jurisdiction, a court of first instance decides suits, petitions, or applications. Appellate jurisdiction is the power or authority conferred upon a superior court to rehear by way of appeal, revision, etc. of causes which have been tried and decided by courts of original jurisdiction. Munsif's courts Courts of civil judges, small cause courts are having original jurisdiction only, while district courts, high courts have original as well as appellate jurisdiction. Sixth, exclusive and concurrent jurisdiction. Exclusive jurisdiction is that which confers sole power on one court or tribunal to try, deal with, and decide a case. Concurrent or coordinate jurisdiction is jurisdiction which may be exercised by different courts or authorities between the same parties at the same time and over the same subject matter. It is, therefore, open to a litigant to invoke jurisdiction of any of such court or authority. Seventh, General and Special Jurisdiction General jurisdiction extends to all cases comprised within a class or classes of causes. Special or limited jurisdiction, on the other hand, is jurisdiction which is confined to special, particular, or limited causes. 8. Legal and Equitable Jurisdiction Legal jurisdiction is a jurisdiction exercised by common law courts in England, while equitable jurisdiction is a jurisdiction exercised by equity courts. Courts in India are courts of both law and equity. Ninth, Municipal and Foreign Jurisdiction Municipal or domestic jurisdiction is a jurisdiction exercised by municipal courts, that is, courts in a country. Foreign jurisdiction means jurisdiction exercised by a court in a foreign country. A judgment rendered or a decision given by a foreign court is a foreign judgment. Tenth, Expounding and Expanding Jurisdiction Expounding jurisdiction means to define, clarify, and explain jurisdiction. Expanding jurisdiction means to expand, enlarge, or extend the jurisdiction. 
it is the duty of the court to expound its jurisdiction it is however not proper for the court to expand its jurisdiction